Oh, we are just overwhelmed. This is so beautiful. It's my first time to see a building like that. Oh, the building is very, very nice. Aesthetically, it is one of the most beautiful classrooms that I've ever seen. It's so beautiful. It's going to attract the learners. It is going to motivate them. It picks up on the traditional architecture of Zululand and has translated it into a very successful building. Education is a problem all over the world. It doesn't matter where you travel, education is in one form of crisis or another. In our country, we have a really severe crisis. So against that background, the David Rattray Foundation commitment to education in the areas that are the hardest hit, which is the deep rural areas, we've got a lot of very good schools in some of the urban areas, but the schools that have really been debribed are in the, in the deep rural areas. When we started with our school building projects back in 2007, it was immediately apparent to us that just building and providing uh, schools with a, with a, a free bunch of classrooms wasn't working very well. And we couldn't understand why until we realized that the community themselves weren't participating in it. They didn't own the school. They didn't feel it belonged to them. Up to now, especially in rural areas, if a school was to be built, it was designed in Pretoria, on a piece of paper, sent down, and that's what you got. So we talked to the school, we talked to the principal, we talked to the Department of Education, we talked to the community. Everybody was in agreement, and we started to build. We've moved into a community here and started setting up a building using local people, and they've been trained as our builders. Some of them were school leavers, and some of them have just lived in the community forever, but they've actually never, ever constructed anything of their own. And they came along, and, and in, in, in two months, we had them building buildings and putting up walls, putting in windows, doing floors, etc., etc. We don't use brick to, to build the structure. We use sand in formwork, so we ram it with the sand into formwork, and that creates our walls for us. The principle of rammed earth itself is universal. Rammed earth structures were developed all over the world and it was an inexpensive way in which to, to develop substantial structures, and in many cases multi-story structures, which have lasted thousands of years. It actually suits your unskilled labourer because you don't need specialised bricklayers, etc. You can take anyone, like I said, and put them to work. And that's been a great advantage for a community where you're walking in, they've never had the experience, and now suddenly they're building a house or building a building. The local community is involved in constructing these, these structures, so there is a, 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 an opportunity for people to feel truly responsible for what they have erected. The whole concept is not a question of maybe some handout or the donation purely in the true sense of the word. But you know what we require the community is that at least they must contribute something, no matter how small it is, so that they will feel that they have been the part of the whole process. I appreciated when the community was part of the building of this project. They benefited very much because they were part. They were working for it and I feel they will be proud of owning this building and this school. And they are going to protect it. There is a manager, Mike, who take our children to teach them how to work and and to teach them that they must stand by themselves to do the things and they must trust themselves. I live in the community right in the centre of the village and it's very welcoming and because I have input in their community they really appreciate me. This is probably the most exciting contract I've ever worked on. Um, Firstly, because of taking untrained people, getting them to work, and then at the end, seeing the delight in their faces when they've realized what they've actually put together and what they've done.
one of the big concerns we have with all of our projects is some measure of sustainability. And the only way that we felt we could achieve that was by getting the community involved in the process. It's for the people, by the people. And we believe that this, this in, in the future, will be the way to expand into the rural areas. This is uh, Nombuso Mozibuko, and she was one of our local community members, which uh, have never been trained to do this kind of work before, but she's doing an outstanding job. I didn't know that you can do this thing if you are a woman. Well, basically, she's done anything and everything from mixing concrete to the foundations to digging the foundations, uh, laying the floors, putting on the roof. You name it, she's done it. Now I want to open my own business so that I can help the community to build for them the house. At the beginning of October, I had no skills. I didn't even know how to even put a brick. Two or three of them finished uh, matric a few years ago, and for three years they have been unemployed. So that's their first job. Now I've got carpentry skills, uh, building skills, bricklaying, I've got business skills. Through the training program, which is a key component of the project, it's given them a skills that they can take away to another job somewhere else and say, listen, I've been working, here's my, my certification, I'm accredited, I can do this, I can do that and they stand a better chance of getting a job. This is one of my prized students. Uh, this guy, I trained him myself in um, construction management. These earth frame structures are built by unskilled people who are trained very easily and then you perpetuate an industry that we need so badly. If you involve the people who are living around there, at least when the project is finished, you are, they are left with uh, um, certificates and skills because you can't um, replace skills no matter what. The children are very much excited. They just want to get inside even before it is finished. I like to comment about this classroom because they are so very beautiful and I like them and I will learn to this classroom. With my friends, we prefer to learn here. This is so beautiful. I think it's a way to go because, you know, it can be used as a, a hall and it's even much cooler inside, you know, kids won't feel sleepy inside and, you know, I think even the educators will get more confidence in teaching that one. And you know what I like most is a, it's a structure itself. For me, walking into this building today, I was absolutely blown away. It was actually quite an emotional moment. And I think that this is a fantastic example of what happens when people put their minds to it and work together in a cooperative way. And this should be a role model for our country on how to start tackling uh, the massive education crisis that we have. There was nothing here six months ago. It took one month to upskill and train the local community, sufficient people to actually put up this remarkable building. Six months later, we have a complete and absolutely splendid building here. It's a wonderful role model.